I made a fatal decision. I, I try, I try with a little help from my friend Hans uh, to make my little lit lecture in English, but I believe it is English because there are so many English-speaking people here and I want, don't want to bore them. And if we do the same we did last year, to translate it, it's half an hour or more. Yeah, <laughs> you remember it? Oh yes, me too, me too. Well, uh, first, first, before I start with Chitty, um, I want, I'm, I'm a guest here as you are, and uh, I want to thank Hubert for his um, program this year, and for the perfect... <laughs> the perfect presentation to his staff, of course, or the projectionists. I know what a lot of work that is. So I had said for seven years, 70 millimeter in my cinema uh, myself, and it's really a lot of work. And I, again, here I will return in two weeks here in Karlsruhe to the Schauburg because Herbert, you got the uh, first prize of the Bundesministerium für Kultur und Medien. And he, yeah. the first one who really deserves it. <laughs> Don't tell it. <laughs> now, for the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, I come from Düsseldorf, and I have uh, there is a cinema, uh, no, a children's film festival every year, and a couple of years ago they had a, a screening of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and I thought to myself, who will, which, are there children? They want to see this film, but it was sold out, and after the festival, they uh, the uh, children could pick up their favorite film. And guess who bought that? No, not Pippi Langstocking, it was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. They really loved this film. Although the German version is cut, uh, there are three songs not in the movie. One song is not... Uh, it's okay if it's cut out, but <laughs> you will see later. Um, this film was a big flop in Germany in the 60s. At that time you had a lot of musicals. Since the sound of music you had uh, Dr. Doolittle, you had uh, Star, and all these, uh, you couldn't see. Um, Finn's Rainbow, it was really horrible. So I didn't see the film because I couldn't bear no musicals anymore. And it was gone after two weeks. But there is one, uh, um, um, it was on TV and it became famous on TV. It's in England, or you know that, uh, in America it's a big hit, but not in Germany. And um, Gerd Fröbe, who plays Baron Bomberst, is uh, from Saxonia. So I came from, I was in Leipzig last week, and uh, he's from Zwickau. And in Zwickau, when you come to Zwickau, maybe sometime you go to Zwickau. It's a very beautiful little town. And there is a Gerd Fröbe Straße. And his English is always with his dialect. He, he speaks that dialect. And good talk, what have we seen? And he speaks a little like his Baron Bomberst as he is from Zwickau, Baron Bombers from Zwickau. And uh, he was, uh, with his accent, he played um, in the film Is Paris Burning, the German uh, General Van Holstein. Nee. Ah, that's what took those magnificent men, excuse me. And uh, they did dub him in this film because they didn't want his uh, Zwickau dialect. So uh, it's the only film where you can hear his typical voice. You hear he's singing in this film. It's one song he is singing. It's very beautiful. It's um, um, You're My Little Chutti Face, yeah. Where he tries to murder his wife. But it, he didn't succeed. Um, you find the text, the text in this program. I hope you bought it. So I will not read all this. You can read it afterwards. And Thomas will um, publish it on his website in 70mm.com in an English translation. I didn't. Uh, Unfortunately, it's in German. So, I want to, uh, to give you some information about the composers of the music, because uh, I think it's, uh, they are, everyone knows the songs from Mary Poppins, and everyone knows the songs from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but no one knows the composer. Andrew Lloyd Webber is well known, Rodgers and Hammerstein, but the Sherman brothers are not. You can order uh, by Amazon a um, beautiful film called The Boys. This is about the Sherman brothers. And uh, Robert Bernard Sherman 
died last year at the age of 86, and Robert Sherman is still alive, Robert Morton Sherman. And uh, he is the extrovert type, and his brother was more the introverted type. And uh, he wrote the lyrics, and Richard is a composer, he composed the song. And they were asked, hold on, will you take for a song like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or A Spoonful of Sugar? They said, yeah, half a day, it's no problem. It's not a problem to compose the song, but to have the idea. And mostly they were known for their word plays that write uh, well, Wortspiel, Wortspiel. Like Supercalifragilis, Expilligatisch. You can say backwards, but I won't. <laughs> Sorry, it's not the German version. Yeah, Gethic, Gauchus. Gauchus, Gauchus. And in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it's of course uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You will see in the film where it comes from. It has some reason. And uh, uh, Miao Bamboo, that's one of my favorite songs in the film because it's a beautiful ballet in this um, film. And um, we have a guest at the moment in Düsseldorf. He will come back in two weeks, Howard Blake. It's a British composer. Some of you may know him if you know this Christmas TV cartoon, The Snowman. And there's a very famous song, Walking in the Air, which everyone knows except in Germany. And uh, that's pretty hard to sell this man when he comes. And he worked with Erwin Costal in 1967 for a musical called Half a Sixpence. And I asked him, because of this little speech today, what was Erwin Costa like? He said, oh yes, he was an American. But he was very well educated, very polite, very <laughs> musical educated. And uh, he had one uh, thing, I had to play the chords and the harmonies of the songs. Not the songs, but the chords and the harmonies. And he listened to that and he built up his orchestration on chords and harmonies. And he has this crazy idea to use uh, many instruments. In this particular scene, in uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, he used 20 xylophones. And he used only 20 because he couldn't find any more xylophones. Uh, xylophones player in London, that's the reason why. But in six track stereo, it's great. You will love it, it's amazing. And uh, <clears throat> Robert was, um, uh, as a 17 year old, he enlisted in the American army. He wanted to go to World War II in his own words, to kill Germans. So, he didn't, in fact, but he was shot in his, in his uh, knee. So he's always with a walking stick for the rest of his life. And, uh, but he came to Germany and he was uh, in the concentration camp Dachau when it was uh, liberated. And uh, that was, for the rest of his life, he never forgot these scenes he saw there. And it's um, in his, Sometimes it's in his songs, like Mary Poppins' Feed the Birds, or um, in uh, Charles Webb, you know, Charles Webb, Zuckermann's Farm, was the German title. There's a song of Father, Mother Earth and Father Time, yeah. That's what, his personal favorite song. And um, when he, they wrote a lot of, of songs for famous singers in the 50s, and um, the last musical they made was Tom Sawyer, that was in, not in, never in Germany, but never in German, was in England a big success. Yeah. And Chitty Chitty Bang Bang came at the end of their Disney period, uh, because Walt Disney died and they were protected by Walt Disney and uh, they left the studio. They did some songs for the Jungle Book, the song of Car, um, Trust in Me, uh, what was the other one? Um, I want to be like you, and Colonel Hartis Parade. It's their necessities by another composer. And uh, they left the studio, and then came, uh, at that time, there came um, um, Albert Boccoli and asked them to make a musical Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And they didn't know what the title means. And it's Ian Fleming, or he wrote the Bond story. So, what's that? Crazy. And they um, read the book, of course, and said, that's. Great, that's brilliant. And it was their best musical after Mary Poppins and their greatest success. And imagine that the musical was on stage in London five or four years ago and a big success. It was the biggest blockbuster on stage in London. 
of all times and the most expensive music because they built a car and this car flew through the auditorium. <laughs> Even Mary Poppins was made as a stage musical two years before and a big success and they wrote specially songs for this production. Yeah, that's uh, the story so far. The car, if you want to see the car, it's still there. You have to call Peter Jackson, the director of Lord of the Rings. He bought the car. <laughs> He was driving through London half a year ago. You can look at the internet, you can see photos. Peter Jackson sitting in GT. And uh, he claims that it still can fly. So, I think in the third part of Hobbit, maybe they fly to uh, Middle Earth. Thank you for your attention. Have a good time with Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And thank you.